Recording in progress. Okay, I want to welcome <laughs> everyone. everyone. We still, we still have, have a go. So I'm so eating. Yeah, yeah, let's correct, correct the, echo. the echo. If we if can. We can. There's my nephew. That's I right. think we're clear now. All right. Can everyone hear me clearly without echo? Yes, yeah. that's sticky. Okay, welcome to meeting number 3,661. Are they acknowledged? We still, got, still an got an echo. echo. Should we Should begin? We begin or? Or? Can you guys hear me? I'll, I'll be speaking in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me fine? Okay, so um, maybe I can, you know, as I do, that's good news because I'll be speaking up for a fair portion uh, and then maybe you guys All can right, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll step up for the, the uh, up the upcoming, upcoming schedule. schedule. Yeah, and and the basic, welcome, welcome to, the to the college. Uh, we this evening we're going to hear from the One Earth Collective. We uh, will listen to a presentation, followed by a question and answer period, and then we go to a brief remarks rebuttal period, followed by uh, the speaker's final comments. So there's four elements to the presentation this evening. There are two rules at the college complexes. Uh, one is one full at a time, meaning do not interrupt the speaker or me. Uh, and no personal attacks. Got it? Those mm -hmm. are the rules, guys. Okay, so we, we this is also beginning our four four part series of Earth Day special Earth Day speakers, and so we'd like to welcome. Uh, I'll just say, on following next week, we're going to be discussing uh, clean energy, hydrogen specifically, followed by candidates for the Water Metal Metropolitan District, and to conclude uh, around Arbor Day with a presentation by myself on for deforestation and the existence of a primitive species occupying those forests. Okay, I will turn it over to our speaker and let's welcome her to the College of Capital. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Um, Charles, would you be able, would you be able to do my, do the slides so people can see? What we're covering? Uh, you can. You can. I, I can't. Can you? Right. Right. Aren't you? Aren't you able to, able do, to it? do it? Okay. Um, it's disorienting for me, but I'll I'll still do it. It's okay. Oh. Oh. Um, just because you, you, I can't see you guys as well. Okay. <laughs> Great. Can you guys see that slide? Yes, yes. And can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, terrific. Great. Um, so thank you so much for the invitation to be here. Um, um, I'm honored. And um, I'm Anna Garcia Doyle. I'm the executive director of One Earth Collective. And uh, we I'll tell you about who we are in a minute. And um, if everybody could just mute, I'm getting some background noise, if that's okay. Um, it's a little, I just want to make sure that we uh, make sure that we don't have any of that on the recording either. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to just 
advance the slide. So uh, I'll try not to speak too long. I know this is a collaborative time as well. And so I'm just going to talk a little bit about the start of our work um, oh, over 10 years ago. Uh, we're going to talk about the mission and model of the uh, organization and the film festival, a little bit about the growth of uh, the festival specifically and the impact. We're going to talk about um, intersections. Um, I'm going to specifically touch on environmental justice and how that made its way into our work. And uh, we have other programs that are not the Film Fest. I'm just going to you know, touch on those briefly as well um, so that you kind of know the scope of what we do. And then an invitation at the end for you to join us in several ways if you're so inclined. And then um, a thank you and an opportunity um, to stay in touch. I'll have my information, contact information there at the end. Um, so yeah, I'll just dive right in. Uh, if there are questions or comments, you can go ahead and let me know or maybe put those in the chat and then um, Charles or Tim if you see anything and you could just let me know and we could pause if need be. Um, so great. Thanks again. So One Earth Collective is a nonprofit organization based here in the Chicago area. I don't know if everybody here, I don't know where all you guys are from, um, but we're based in the Chicago area and um, we have three areas of work. As I mentioned, we have this film festival. Uh, it's a strictly environmental film festival. I'll tell you why we're doing that work. Um, and then we have a whole host of programs that are under the banner of what we call Youth Voices, their youth programs. And then we have a whole host of programs that are called One Earth Local. And that was formerly uh, what we called Green Community Connections. If you've ever heard of that, uh, that's how we started. Um, and that was our initial name. And now we're called One Earth Collective. And so um, we really needed to expand beyond what we were doing primarily in the Oak Park and River Forest area, um, just bordering Chicago. And so that's where the Film Fest and Youth Voices came in. So um, the festival itself uh, started in 2012 in an Oak Park living room with two questions about the environment. The first question was, how could uh, more people become aware of the issues? We really felt like we were talking to ourselves, frankly, um, because we were doing events, we were doing green forums and um, what we called pro-action cafes and all kinds of things and uh, we weren't getting beyond the choir and we felt urgent about getting to more people. So that was our first question. How do we get more people to become aware? And then how could we uh, get more people uh, to feel moved to take some kind of action on our climate crisis? So those are the two questions and um, in its init initial kind of form, the One Earth Film Festival, you see our logo on the bottom left there. Um, our tagline was moving planet, moving people. And so as we move people with these stories um, and they so feel so moved um, collectively, then perhaps we can move the planet. And so that was the initial um, birth of the festival. Um, the mission of the festival specifically um, is through sustainable sustainability themed films and facilitated discussion, uh, we want to educate, raise awareness, and inspire the adoption of inclusive, solution-oriented, sustainable actions. So that's the kind of mission that you'll see on our website, oneearthfilmfest.org. But um, really, I think our informal mission is sort of described by this quote here. I always wondered why somebody didn't do something about that, and then I realized I am somebody. So uh, we started to really think that if folks left our film festival feeling this way, we had done our job. Um, so the next piece is just why film? Why did we choose to move away? And it isn't that we don't do other things, but we really um, developed the kind of film side of what we do. And so we're not filmmakers. We do not come from the side of film. We learned a lot over the last decade or more, um, but we really come from environment. We were a group of activists um, on the west side of Chicago and here in the Oak Park and River Forest area and surrounding uh, communities. So well, we felt that um, film is, a, and the arts in general, are a powerful medium for creating social change. And we felt and still do feel that that's what's needed. These are, what you see on the screen are some of the films that um, we've shown this season. So we just finished our March 11th annual March festival, uh, March 4th through 13th. 
and we are now about a week away from our April Earth Week mini film festival. It's a continuing partnership with the city of Chicago. Um, and so it's the uh, Office of Sustainability, the Chief Sustainability Officer, Angela Tovar, and her team. Um, so it's our eighth year of doing that, you know, City of Chicago, One Earth uh, collaboration. And so that's coming up um, April 18th to 24th. Don't miss it. There's one thing every day, one screening every day of Earth Week. Um, and so I don't know if you guys can, like, raise your digital hand or your real hand or <laughs> give me a thumbs up. If you have ever, ever felt that you were changed by a film on any topic, did you ever feel that a film changed? Yeah, I see Kelvin's hand up. Anybody else feel like they, um, yep, I see Charles, thank you. Yeah, I feel the same way. I think um, films can really like pull us into a story and uh, transport us in ways that other things can't. And we'll talk more about that later. So that's where we came up with this idea of this film festival. The model that drives our film festival. Okay. So the model is that we already know that we have lots and lots of data about this climate emergency that we are facing, that we are living through. And um, you can see some examples of data right here. <laughs> One of them is uh, the global heat map from um, NASA. The other is a you know, a table of global net anthropogenic, anthropogenic emissions um, from the IPCC's recent, most recent report, right? So there's this data that we have more data than I believe, we believe, than uh, we can shake a stick at. There is just so much data and we, it has not moved us to do what we need to do at the scale and in the timing that we need to do it. Right. So we consider that sort of like the head piece. So bear with me. Data, you know, something you're trying to understand in your brain. That's one piece. Right. The next piece is oops, is um, I want to go up. OK, is uh, not data, but stories. Films are stories. We also have these two young kids here reading a book. Right. But stories, when you guys raise your hands like, yeah, I've been changed by a film, I'm sure we could also also say perhaps that we've been changed by a book or more, more many books. Um, but media can be very powerful because they transport us into stories that may not be our own, but um, that we can identify with even in our own lives. And so um, that's kind of where we feel like the real power is, this power of stories. Uh, it gets us from our headspace to our heart space. And I think that's what we feel is needed at this point in time. Um, and then the last piece is action. So data, stories, and action, or head, heart, and hands, right? Because if you could get inside a story and you can connect to that story and say, oh my gosh, I, I had no idea, or um, I can't believe this is happening, or gee, I can see myself um, doing what I just saw happening in that film in terms of solutions. Um, that these are perhaps the kinds of things um, that can get people mobilized. So uh, our model, we like to talk about it as head, heart, and hands. It's not that we don't share data. It's not that we um, are you know exclusively, but we believe that stories is probably the most important tool that we have, and that's why we use films. So um, the next slide is I'm going to um, play this video. It's like a minute long. Um, and it's just to give you a sense of if you've never been to the film festival, um, kind of what our um, kind of what our message was this year. So our theme, we have a theme every year was turn the tide. And I'll just play this short video. Hopefully it'll come through OK for all of you guys. Oh, oh, gosh. Hold on. Battery. Hold on. Wow, that was scary. <laughs> I can. I can, Tim. Okay. Okay. Can, can others? Okay. Uh, I'm going to play this video, and maybe folks can say in the chat whether that's working for them. Okay. A wave of catastrophes is steadily approaching. We must turn the tide and act now. <laughs> Let's try this again, shall we? Let's work together and turn the tide on climate change.
Let's nurture our land and support Earth's magnificent creatures, even the small ones. Let's turn the tide on choking air pollution and cut down on useless waste. Let's protect our old growth forest and heal our burning planet. Let's turn the tide for our children. OneEarthFilmFest.org. Okay, great. Let me get us back to the slide deck. Um, sorry, I have to hide you guys so I can. I don't know why. Here we go. Okay. Can you guys still see? Okay. All good. Okay. Um, alert me if something's not working. Okay, so that is what we called our promo video or trailer reel for this year's fest. Hopefully it gives you a flavor. Um, it shared some kind of the kinds of films and scenery from the kinds of films that we showed this season. We had 18 screening events and um, yeah, it was great. We have a hybrid model. Some uh, um, Everything is virtual and then some of the virtual events have a, an in-person component um, at you know locations around Chicago. So like Northwestern University and University of Chicago um, were hosts. Um, we have museums. Um, yeah. Anyway, so I will, um, I'll keep moving. Um, so the next slide is just a little bit about our growth. And so I don't want to go into great detail about this because I know we don't have too much time. But wait, basically, wait, 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 oh, uh, okay, I'm making you the, oh, wait. Can you co host me or can I co host you? Because I want to go host her. Uh, it doesn't give me that option. That's very weird. Um, cause just, I won't, just, just I'll make you the host and then I guess you're going to have to co-host me back so I can keep sharing my slides. So do I make you the host, Tim? Yeah, Sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Okay. Still have still okay. All Should right. I keep going? You guys yes, can see yes, the slides. Okay. Great, thanks, Tim. Um, so we basically started in 2012 in our first year. As I mentioned, we were founded in kind of the Oak Park River Forest area. We had 27 events and 486 attendees. Um, we planned it in seven weeks, and we were shocked at the number of people that came um, so quickly. Uh, it signaled to us that there was a demand for some kind of, I don't know, community building, or they liked the movies. We're not 100% sure from back then. But um, we now, um, I'm going to put up some stats on the right side here, um, year 11, uh, we had 18 virtual events, we're about to have seven more, so we will have um, a full 25 after we conclude our Earth Week mini film festival. Uh, we had 12 live Chicago events, um, <laughs> and we're estimating over 1,000 attendees, and overall more than 38,000 people have attended one Earth Film Fest events so far since our inception in 2012. Um, so I'll cover this real quickly, but you know, we don't want to do this as an entertainment. This, we, like I said, we don't come from film, so it's not actually really about the films for us. The films are an opportunity for us to open a door to a conversation uh, that gets people feeling connected to the films and the stories in the films, such that, as we talked about earlier, they can feel motivated to take action. And so um, impact is important to us, because um, like I said, it's not about the films, it's not an entertainment, if you will, it's, um, it's a tool for action. So, um, uh, so we did a impact study, and um, just here's some just little kernels from that. 97% of attendees have told others about the festival. 96% have adopted or reinforced a sustainable practice or habit, which we thought was very encouraging. Um, okay, so this is the degree to which survey respondents agree or strongly agree that they were inspired to become involved in, environment, in env environmental actions or solutions. Folks who said they were inspired by the films themselves, 97%. Uh, in the discussion, we always have a facilitated discussion with a trained facilitator afterwards, that's 93%. 
uh, inspired by the action opportunities, folks also said 93%. And the, this is interesting, the top intended action areas, we always ask them in a post survey, um, and we usually have about a 20% um, or higher survey uh, response rate, which is um, we're, we're, proud, we're glad about. Um, the top one last year, we haven't crunched this year's data because we're still in the middle of this year's uh, fest season, but from uh, the 2021 fest season, um, when we ask folks what uh, top three areas they intend to take action in, number one, um, so 41% of respondents was climate change. It was number three the year before that in terms of ranking, you know, in what areas they'd like to take action. So that was very interesting. Uh, number two was waste and recycling. Um, and the year before it was also number two. Um, the third area where they wanted to take action was food and agriculture. Um, that was number three, and that was the year before, number four, so things are kind of switching around a little. And then uh, no, the fourth area in which they wanted to take action was conservation, and uh, the year before it was, uh, conservation was number one. So it's just interesting to see. Um, and then just in terms of the audience, 54, so more than half of respondents report being new to the film festival, which we think is great because we love repeat folks. Um, we have some folks who've been coming for 11 years, um, but we also love to see that we are getting beyond our existing uh, base of folks um, because we feel urgent about these issues and more people being aware and taking action is important to us. Uh, most respondents hear about uh, our work through a friend or family member or through social media. Um, in terms of the gender breakout, we're heavily female, around 70%, 30% uh, male, and then less than 1% non non-binary or third gender ages. Um, we're really trying to grow this bucket of the 18, 24, uh, 18 to 24 year olds, which is now about 11%. Uh, but it came from 7% uh, up to 11%, so that's going in the right direction. Right. Also, I don't know how many young folks fill out surveys, so this is all just self-selecting because it's folks who respond to our surveys. Um, and then our uh, kind of highest bucket is that 25% uh, of folks who responded to the survey said that they were in the uh, 55 to 64 year old age range. So just a little look at like who our audience yes. is. Okay, I'm just gonna take a, a little bit of a turn here and talk about intersections. I know that um, you know we're hearing some of these words a lot now, and I don't. I, I hope they're not losing their meaning, but um, I'll describe what I'm talking about. So, um, in 2017, I was you know continuing the environmental work that I do that I've been doing for some time, and um, I heard an interview, and in the interview, interview. the word disposable was used. And it was not an environmental topic interview. It was an interview of Michelle Alexander, who is a civil rights lawyer and an author and a speaker. And some of you may have read her book, The New Jim Crow, um, but she was talking about disposable. And I was like, well, I don't know why she's using our words. She's not an environmentalist. What is this about? So it came, became very clear to me that she wasn't really talking about disposability in the sense of, you know, um, discarded bottles and discarded plastic bags and us casting away our old stuff. Uh, it became really clear to me that she was talking about how we dispose of one another. Hey, hey. And that was a really big, um, that was big for me. That was big for me personally. Um, and so after that, um, I really could not stop seeing these connections, truly, like where disposability is a word that kind of hinges these kind of two movements, right? Like social and racial justice, and then environment. And so now environmental justice, I think, is a lot of what we, we work on. So um, I'll just give some other examples where after this um, connection that I made in my mind, um, I started seeing things all over the place. Um, like uh, Jericho Brown, who's an award-winning poet, and he, um, he runs uh, the creative writing program at Emory University. He says, if you are good at hurting black people, you will hurt the environment, I promise you. If you are good at hurting women, you will also be interested in war, I promise you. And this is, the, this is very powerful for me. Um, I don't know how this sits with others, but um, it started to really, again, bring in these threads that before this felt separate. And to me, they are no longer separate. Um, and then uh, it's not even just a recent phenomenon. We can look at uh, Dr. King, who, um, you know, is actually very often referred to as an environmentalist. Um, and so I'll read his quote. 
we must rapidly begin the shift from a thing-oriented society to a person-oriented society. When machines and computers, profit motives, and property rights are considered more important than people, the giant triplets of racism, materialism, and militarism are incapable of being conquered. And so this for me is how these intersections are constantly now woven together for me in my, in my view, in my purview, and in, in our work. Um, and so I won't go all into this slide. Um, you guys can have a copy of this deck if you'd like to, but I guess all to say that we started to incorporate the idea of um, social justice, racial justice, and economic justice into our work uh, because it was really important to us that, um, and we saw that these things were inextricably linked. Um, so there are some photos here of the festival um, on the left side um, where the, I think the message here is that, you know, you see like one of our audience members has the mic, you know, the idea that this was before COVID, um, but we're coming back to in-person events too. So this is um, something that happened again this season. We had live audience members in some places, but just the idea that, you know, it's about community building, really. It's not like about, you know, movies, to be honest. Um, the movies are great and they were really important for us to, um, we have 85 reviewers from all over the world. Um, it's important for us to curate a very strong panel of films, but again, that's just the starting point, not the ending. It's the community building. On the right, uh, well, on the left, where all these film fest pictures are, you see this food truck, Ministry of Sandwiches. We will bring food trucks. We will bring snakes. We have uh, this little girl, Maya, with a serpent, or <laughs> not a serpent, she's a snake. I, I don't know what kind of snake it is. But we had some folks bring um, some reptiles um, to kids' events. We had um, the one at the bottom where the kids are high-fiving. Uh, we had a youth event at an ice cream parlor for a number of years, and the kids could have ice cream sundaes, right? And then you see this person with the goggles on, in the middle on the left, on the far left. Um, we got a grant from the MacArthur Foundation one year, one year, like maybe 2015 or something, to uh, work with Conservation International in Washington, D.C. to bring virtual reality to a bunch of our screenings. So people could come early and put on these headsets and it would take them uh, into the reef in Indonesia. Um, and there was one other experience. There were two experiences that they could enjoy for, you know, 10 minutes like at a pop. Um, so there were lines before the screening where people were all trying to get in on the VR. So. Um, so anyway, I think the message here is that we are trying to package this festival. Um, festival is a festive word. <laughs> We're trying to package this festival in a way. These issues are heavy. Um, there's certainly a lot of despair about what we're facing. And those of us who do this work uh, have to be able to hold the both end of that, right? Um, but also the opportunity to, you know, extend primarily free events to folks to be inclusive in that way and to be able to package things um, where, you know, it's about community and it's about the emphasis on joy and um, community building. So those are some of the photos from the festival on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, I'm just gonna uh, pivot a little bit. Um, I had said in the very beginning that we have these three program areas. One is the festival, we've talked a lot about that. The other is what we call Youth Voices. So we have five youth programs that we work on and so you see those four young folks at the top, right up, right next to the Youth Voices image. Those are our winners of our Young Filmmakers Contest. We have a Young Filmmakers Contest for ages uh, grade three through uh, post-college, actually. Um, and there are winners at every level, and every winner wins cash, as well as a matching grant to an organization of their choice that's doing good work in the topic of their film. Um, so that picture and then the little boy under the Youth Voices image with his iPad is making a film because we run workshops uh, with professional filmmakers to teach young filmmakers how to make films, environmental films, um, and they can enter our contest. Um, the pictures, so that's one of our youth programs. The other one that I want to mention, there's a couple others. Um, if you see on the upper right, um, there is a man holding a chicken. And um, he is Michael Stratmanis from the Obama Foundation. He comes to speak to uh, one of our youth cohorts every year. Um, called The cohort is called Austin Grown. It's a partnership between us and Build Chicago, which is a gang intervention and violence prevention um, or nonprofit organization in South Austin in the Chicago area. And um, we've been partnering with Build to put on this program now for four years. And so 
Uh, this is Ashley, one of our teen leaders, um, teaching Michael how to hold one of our nine chickens. So it's really fun to see these teenagers who are growing up in a very urban environment um, and not always a safe environment, certainly in South Austin, um, you know, stewarding these chickens, um, growing food, um, cooking with vegan chefs who pop up a table, which becomes like a makeshift kitchen uh, on their farm. Um, so that's some of the work. That same group went, goes on field trips. I manage all the field trips and you'll see them in the middle with holding flowers. They, we went to see Southside Blooms in Englewood in the Chicago area. Um, and they got to pick flowers from the flower farm, uh, meet the bees. There are bees, they're also doing, they have solar, they're, they have water catchments, they have a whole water um, recycling system. And so they got to see what you know another farm is doing because they have their own farm, our youth do. Um, so that's our Austin Grown program on the very on the right where these kids are cooking. There's three young folks on the right cooking. That's our health program. Uh, these are our health ambassadors. This is based in the Pilsen community, predominantly um, Spanish speaking uh, families there and um, they're cooking. They also grow food. They also cook um, and they do a lot of horticultural therapy work. Um, and then the other two uh, images at the bottom, forgive me, I just really feel like these are close to my heart and so I just wanna mention all the programs that we work on for youth. Um, we have a group called It's Our Future, which is youth from um, Chicago area, you know, all different, Evanston, Oak Park, Chicago proper. Um, and they, we sent them to the COP. They, uh, five of them went to COP 26 in November. We got some grant funding to do that. And um, they in, lined up a ton of interviews with um, folks. And um, this is uh, one of our young folks, Lily on the right with her mask on, interviewing Leah Thomas, who if you know who she is, she's the envi intersectional environmentalist and she has a new book coming out and she had, does a uh, podcast and she's a real um, hero for, for some of our young people. And so they were over the moon to be interviewing her um, in uh, Glasgow, Scotland during the COP conference. Um, and then on the right hand side at the bottom, the last image that I'll share is that we have um, our fifth program for youth is a youth advisory council. These are young folks who are um, entirely youth led. They curate and direct and play all the roles and run um, uh, our youth screening events. So some of our screening events are specifically for and by youth. And um, that's our Youth Advisory Council in action with a film subject and a director and also uh, Deja Powell in the bottom left there at the green box. She is one of the leaders of Sunrise Movement. Um, and so they invited her and she came. So they interviewed her uh, in a screening event. So those are our youth programs. I'm almost at the end here and I'd be happy to take questions or talk about anything you'd like to talk about. Um, and then the last uh, piece in terms of programmatically is, um, as I said, we do these, we started as what was called Green Community Connections, which was very local to the Oak Park and River Forest community. And so our programs that are on that under that banner still of One Earth Local include things like, on the left, you see this man with his native garden. We do have a native tree and shrub sale every year in the fall and so that's kind of hyper local it's a very specific set of communities kind of on the west side and near west suburbs of chicago um, so that's under the banner of local um, and then uh, all the other images are from a program that we work with um, together with 22 other partner organizations uh, called austin eats and the real uh, kind of focus of this program is um, kind of rewriting the food narrative in Chicago's Austin community, which is the largest of our 77 uh, communities and quite disinvested if uh, you probably know that. Um, and so we do things like have film screenings where in the upper right, you can see there's a chef and a facilitator talking after one of our films called Soul Food Junkies. This is all about sustainable food systems and um, food justice, uh, food access. Um, we had uh, food demos, we gave away free food. Our chef, Michelle Scott, was there with her vegan food company and they just cooked up all kinds of food and gave it away to folks. Um, on the right, you see Cindy from our team. Uh, we gave away a hundred seedlings that we grew ourselves and gave them away so that when people watched the film afterwards, they could bring home seedlings and uh, recipes for those specific seedlings. We had uh, culturally appropriate seedlings, uh, okra, tomato, green bean, um, and then we had specific recipes to go with the plant. 
um, that they could use once they could grow and harvest from that plant. We also brought in a mini farmer's market to one of the screenings so that before and after a movie about urban farming, um, folks could purchase um, farm fresh produce from the Austin and Garfield Park communities. So anyway, this is the kind of thing that uh, films allow us to do. They allow us to have these conversations, to open the door and to tie these threads together in ways that um, make sense for folks, hopefully. Um, so I guess I'll just end on this note. I have one quote too that I wanna share. I always like to end with a quote, but I invite you to join us for our Earth Week Mini Film Festival in partnership, uh, continuing partnership with the city of Chicago. It's the 18th to the 24th of uh, April, so it spans the entirety of Earth Week, one event each day. The link is there, oneearthfilmfest.org slash earth hyphen day. Uh, you can also, if you want to stay in touch with our work, sign up for our e-newsletter um, at oneearthcollective.org. At the bottom, there's an e-news sign up. Um, if you're interested in our memberships or being a sponsor or a donor, there's a link there as well. So many ways to join us and to stay in touch with the work that we do. As I said earlier, I wanted to just mention, um, I wanted to kind of end with this quote, which is um, the idea, I'm gonna circle back to the idea that I shared earlier, which is that um, these topics are despairing. We know that, if we're here, we know that, <laughs> because this is what we're all uh, focused on and what uh, we work on, right? So, um, but uh, again, that I think the flip side of the despair is the joy, which I think drives the work that we do, I can say that, that, you know, that, you know, that it is worth saving and that uh, we can get more people on board uh, without um, kind of an overwhelm or a shutdown that comes from a despair story, but from a joy story that gets more people involved in, you know, kind of a, from a place of abundance rather than scarcity, um, that there is a place for everybody in this movement and that if we, um, you know, eat food, breathe air and drink water, it is our issue. It is not an issue for some subset of tree hugging people. This is a human issue and um, joy is at the center of it uh, if we really value what our earth represents and how it sustains us. Um, so I just want to end with this quote. Uh, this is by Robin Wall Kimmerer. Um, many of you probably know her. She's indigenous. She's also a science professor. Um, she wrote the book Braiding Sweetgrass and um, her quote is, uh, I want to stand by the river in my finest dress. I want to sing strong and hard and stomp my feet with a hundred others so that the waters hum with our happiness I want to dance for the renewal of the world. And that's just a favorite one that I have. And there's my contact information. So if you would like to contact me about anything, feel free to do so. Um, so that's the end of the presentation. Thank you. All right, all right. Can you, I'm gonna I'm switch, switch you. I'm just gonna, just gonna switch, switch up you. Up so, so, uh, so uh, just, 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 uh, just, uh, Um, are there, is this the time for questions, Charlie, Tim? Yeah. Do you yeah, have uh, something that you do usually? I'm waiting, I'm waiting on, on Tim. Tim. Uh, uh, let's, let's get reverb, reverb what we're what talking, we're talking. Charles, do you want me to get set, started with questions or should we wait for Tim or? Um, let's, let's get started, get started with, as long as, as, long as, as it, can, unless, unless there's, there's an, an echo. echo. Bob, Bob Matter? matter. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there, yeah there, there, there is there an echo. An echo. Hmm. Charles, Charles uh, I, noticed, I noticed there's, 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 there's two, two Charles blog. blog. Do you have a you phone have a logged in? Does that just cause a positive? Yet? No. No. That, that's I, not, I, not you. you. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Um, I do see two hands up. Um, I saw Bob's first, and then I saw Alana and Dan. Yes, so, yes, Bob. Bob. Bob, did you have a question? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, you, you mentioned, mentioned Leah. You mentioned, you mentioned Leah, Leah Thomas. Thomas. Mm hmm in Glasgow, in Glasgow Scotland. Scotland. Yes. That, that that's not that's the, not the that's not, that's not the swimmer, swimmer Thomas. Thomas. No, it's the youth activist 
Leah Thomas, she's an author and a podcast creator, and she has an organization called Intersectional Environmentalist. And what's an intersectional intersectional environmentalist? environmentalist? It's a little bit what I talked about where, you know, I think what we're doing now is that we're working at this intersection, right, of, you know, I'm expressing, you know, our organization has seen the connection between racial justice, economic justice, social justice, and environment, and environmental justice. And so that's her work, is to really be working at those all those points of connection, um, that this isn't a movement about light bulbs, specifically, and you know, energy efficiency, specifically, 